Well, my two ladies in one room aren't I the philanderer? <laughs> the wife stopped yelling now. Oh, she had a terrible go at Sarah Nightingale. I had to come out here for a breather, coward that I am. <laughs> Hard to believe I only befriended Sarah this morning. Picked her up in my cab. She was with a businessman. He was built like a brick shithouse. I remember staring at the odd couple in the rear view mirror. He looked at least twice her age and could have easily done a spot of moonlighting as Father Christmas. She possessed all the attributes of a catwalk model. Showed a lot of leg, just my kind of gal. Oh yes, it was love at first sight for this randy old cab driver. Strawberry blonde hair framed her delicate face and cornflower blue eyes peered through that thick fringe. She was wearing a maroon velvet coat and blinding bright bling that could have gone into competition with the northern lights. Because of my bad eyesight, it was hard for me to tell if she was looking at yours truly or the tycoon beside her. He wasn't taking any notice of her, just clinching a deal with Hong Kong on his mobile. We got stuck in traffic near Marble Arch. Don't people surprise you? He jumped out of the cab and slammed the door. It's over, Sarah, he growled. She remained poised and dignified. I felt like tearing a strip off him. I hate it when I see a woman being disrespected. He looked me up and down and paid the fare. You're welcome to my secretary, he said, smirking. Call Miss Nightingale the tip. Watch your mouth, pal, I said. Show the lady some respect. She can't type a letter to save her life, he scoffed. She doesn't even deserve to be called a secretary, and she's certainly no lady. I felt like head-butting him. The lady wasn't hysterical or emotional, and she had no intention of reprimanding her boss. We'll go for a relaxing spin, love, I said. As we drove down Park Lane, I thought of ways to impress the delectable Miss Sarah Nightingale. She was high maintenance and well out of my league, but I knew I was in with a chance. It felt as if Lady Luck was on my side. I've had all the Nolan sisters in the back of my cab, I said, and Demis Roussos. Sarah was totally unimpressed, of course. Her eyes were turned towards the Dorchester and the Hilton. I bet she's stayed in her fair share of luxury hotels, I thought. The best I could offer this posh girl was a bed and breakfast in bloody Brighton. We drove around for ages and eventually ended up lying down on the back seat. Well, she did. I remained upright. <laughs> I wanted to curl up beside her, but that's not my style. Maybe when I was young and virile. It was warm and hazy when we got back here. Sarah looked so comfortable, so peaceful on the back seat. I, I didn't like to disturb her, so I decided to carry her into the house. She was much lighter than my wife, Carmel who'd recently broken the bathroom scales thanks to Mississippi mud pie. Sarah Nightingale obviously didn't consume a morsel. Cheap date. Her perfume wasn't cheap, though. Oh, that exotic stuff was so potent it drove me wild with desire. I felt quite brave carrying the Miss Nightingale over the threshold as Carmel was conveniently out of the picture, doing yet another late shift at the hospital. We'd seen very little of each other lately. What about the neighbours though, eh? <laughs> I'm sure I saw Mrs Skinner's neck curtains twitch. As I opened the front door, I touched Sarah's erogenous zones. She made a strange murmuring sound, but she didn't exactly tell me to stop, so I had a field day. 
Minutes later, Sarah was sitting at our kitchen table, gazing sadly into space like a drug addict. I helped her to take off her coat, and I, I was shocked by what I saw. The white chiffon blouse couldn't disguise the ugly marks on her neck and torso. I thought, I bet that bastard boss of hers caused all the cuts and scratches, but I didn't comment. Instead, I admired her dangly earrings and I found myself massaging her bony shoulders. She responded in some strange, incomprehensible foreign language. And in fact, for the next minute or so, she, she was totally incoherent. I'll be right back, I said, realising it was absolutely futile to talk to her as she couldn't understand me. I was dying to show Percy the porcelain and I dashed upstairs to the bathroom, colliding with Carmel, who explained that she'd swapped shifts with one of the new male nurses. I could have died remembering how she'd attacked the last woman I brought home. Perry, who was that you were talking to downstairs? She asked, tightening her kimono belt. The cat, I said. Liar, she bellowed bolting down the stairs. I distinctly heard a female voice. You're not up to your old tricks again, are you? When my formidable wife of 27 years clapped eyes on Sarah Nightingale with her knees under our kitchen table, she saw red, blood red. My new friend was unfairly branded a whore. No retaliation from Sarah, of course a true lady throughout. I can't hear a sound from either of them. I know where they might be, in the conservatory or out in the garden. After a fight, Carmel likes to treat herself to an al fresco cigarette. Oh God, I shudder when I think of the violent frenzy towards the defenceless Sarah Nightingale. She battered her with a Vileda mop and stabbed her with a corkscrew. Poor Sarah's left eye came out of its socket. But that little radio inside her continued to talk in that obscure foreign language. Oh no, that bonfire smoke signals the end of my affair with Sarah Nightingale. Over before it began, really. That's the second playmate my wife's burned at the stake. Oh, but it's all right for her to bring Titus the toy boy back here, wearing only his speedos. She thinks I know bugger all about Titus, talking Titus, folded up in his packaging under the stairs. Do you know something? I reckon I interrupted the pair of them canoodling when I came in two hours ago.